Okay, so this is the bonus part of chapter four, early telling the story of the stargazer. Before the stars had names, before men knew how to use them to plot their courses, and before anyone had ventured beyond his own horizon, there was a boy who wondered what lay beyond. He gazed up at the stars with praise and wonder, but his wonder was not only born of awe, it was also born of a question, why? Why? This question began as a spark in his breast and grew with the kindling only a boy's curiosity can provide. Why is the sky so big? He would ask his mother. Why am I so small? Why does the water creep up on the shore only to retreat again? The tides. Why does the moon change its shape? Why do shells hold the sound of the sea? Why, 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 why? Like Seinfeld. The mother didn't know the answers to his questions, but she did know that one day he would leave, and that day was not as distance, distant as it had been one time before. She had named him Polaris, a big name for her little boy, and for now she still called him Pi. But the days passed. The moon changed its shape, and the ocean licked the shore, then retreated, and over again. Someday when I am big, he thought, I will put my boat in the water and follow it when it retreats. Then I will know why. And the boy grew big over time. One day he went to his mother and she knew. They both cried the tears, though they were not the same. His were youthful and exhilarating. Hers were old and earned. He had made a necklace of she shells. She had made a necklace. She had made a necklace of ch shells for him so he could always hear the sea lapping on his home shore. How will I find my way? He asked as he prepared to leave. Look to the stars, she said, ruffling his hair. They will guide you. The boy and his mother gazed at the stars as they had when he was small. Remember those? He pointed to a cluster that looked like a crab and another that resembled a hunter. Which should be my guide? His mother looked to the night sky. What do you see? She asked. That one, he pointed to a shining star. That one, the little bear. It's always there. His mother said, we will name the star and it will guide you. And for me, I will know that it is within both our sights. She pointed to the little bear's bright light. That star will be my Polaris. But his mother pointed to a larger group of stars. The little bear has a mother, the great bear. Pi's mother gazed out into the rolling sea and a mother's love is fierce. The great bear will watch over you. Finally, Pi cast off, waving as the distance grew between them and she called after him. He had forgotten the necklace of shells. Too late, he called from a ways offshore. I'll get them when I return. She watched as her son became the first to take the questions burning in his chest and set off by the light of the stars. Her Polaris would be the first navigator, but Pi had not yet earned his name. 